Hi guys, welcome back to Wildebeer Reviews. Today we're talking about Deceased Dead Planet Issue 3, written by Tom Taylor with art by Trevor Harrison. And um, now that we are so deep into the Deceased universe, I feel like I start every review for one of these issues the same way in that I absolutely love everything they're doing with Deceased. I feel like I'm beating the same drum over and over again, and I'm just going to keep beating it because these issues continue to be amazing. I actually read this last night, and I was trying to think of like a new and better way to say how much I love these books without just feeling like I'm saying the same thing over and over again and I think it's just kind of amazing how you take how Tom has been able to take the width and breadth of um, the, the DC Comics characters take this whole toy box right and then it's like when a friend comes over to your house when you were a kid and they take all your action figures or your Barbie dolls or whatever and they play with them in a different way and sometimes you're like oh I don't like that but a lot of times you're like like, hey, I've never thought to play with them that way or use them in this way and kind of taking the, the the framework of a zombie-esque story and then being able to play with all your characters in a different way just creates this great landscape. It has the, the potential to be bad. Like, on paper, that could go hor really, really bad. But Tom Taylor being... Tom Taylor and the the artist and that he surrounded himself with uh, with uh, Trevor Harrison and um, Carl Mostert from the Unkillables one just it's it's turned into absolute gold and it floats to the top of my stack or near the top of my stack every week one of these books comes out and I just absolutely love it deceased at this point is something that I'm going to buy pretty much forever until like they stop making them or they turn or Tom stops writing them and they turn bad um, and it's always going to be a book that I'm going to recommend to anyone it's like you want to get into D into DC comics but you're worried about continuity boom deceased here's something that you can read, can read don't have to worry about anything else so um, this issue in particular so in the last issue issue two we left off where a bunch of our magic based heroes flew off to uh, Australia <clears throat> and because they found Found another um, sanctuary down there in Australia then they were gonna go check it out and it was this very evil looking place and in this issue we come to find out that it's full of evil people and when I say it looked like an evil place it was surrounded by a moat there was fire and it was a big old metal like a box style building and as they were approaching it that moat which they thought was blood turned out to be a infected plastic man and that inflicted infected plastic man took out a few members of our surviving heroes and that's where this one picks up like I said we find out who is in the uh, in this other um, place and it is it's not good and then we've also got another force at play that is makes issue four going to be insane actually I saw that Tom Taylor on Twitter said that he that issue four is going to be the most bonkers yet which oh just gimme 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 can I go to sleep until uh, issue four uh, comes out and then go back to sleep until the year 2020 is over <laughs> all right let's get into the book here so I believe this is mostly narrated um, by Constantine, um, you've got um, pretty much all of these kind of bluish to grayish um, uh, boxes. I think are all uh, by Constantine. And speaking of Constantine, I want to I want you to keep an eye out for this. Um, if you're following along here, or if you have your own copy to follow along with, I think that I don't think that there's a single panel where you can see. Uh, Constantine's left hand that he does not have a cigarette in said hand so I really appreciate the consistency of character that Constantine has found a way to continue smoking in the in the zombie apocalypse in DC I mean now he's got uh, poison ivy there that can uh, grow him tobacco and everything <laughs> but I, I just I, I noticed it and it's hilarious all right so um, we've got Swamp Thing, uh, Detective Chimp, Zatanna, and Constantine here reeling from what happened in a last issue, um, and, and um, Swamp Thing has basically cocooned them inside a bubble of the green so they can survive um, the, survive Plastic Man, um, and they're talking about who they lost here. They lost Blue Devil, and, they, and Rag Man fell too, so a couple characters lost. We turn the page here, and we get that bubble of the green here being assailed by the, uh, the, the liquid Plastic Man out there that's been infected with the anti-life equation. 
Uh, John here says, uh, We're in a ball of plants surrounded by a rampaging shape, shifting monster beside a wall of hell, uh, hellfire, uh, which is why we needed you to wake up. And she asks, What are you proposing? And uh, Ch Detective Chim says, Well, we're next to a wall of hellfire. And Constantine says, That stuff will burn a hole through anything and anything anyone. Zatanna says, I see a swamp thing. Call off the green and three, two, one. And he opens up a, a, a thing there and she slams a plastic man, just engulfs him in this hellfire. She actually says up here, um, uh, into uh, into the flame in her backward speech, which uh, I always love that backward speech. It's such a very niche thing that you can really only do in comics and maybe like novels and stuff like that. But I think it would kind of lose its effect in um, in, a, in a just like a novel, like a prose um, setting. Uh, just being able to read that speech bubble backwards has always uh, in, been really really cool to me. All right, so. They just defeat Plastic Man there. Um, uh, Constantine's narration here says, I hate the smell of burning flesh and the smell of burning plastic. The co a combination of the two is definitely worse. Uh, he went out to find, uh, we went out to find why the green was in pain. And you can see he, Constantine's got his cigarette. Like they get out of the bubble and he's got his uh, smoke there. You can see it there uh, and there right here. They see, he says, you know, goodbye to Rory, the um, rag man. They see Blue Devil's body um, right there. And then as they're still trying to f get their surroundings, uh, Detective Chimp says down. And then someone starts shooting at them, shooting at the, uh, the horde of zombies behind them. The narration here says, um, not the anti living, a different kind of evil, cold and cow calculating absolutely detestable in every way and then someone uh, the announcer uh, the loudspeaker says if you're planning on coming in this is your window Constantine says oh this is the absolute effing worse it was a refuge for the for full of rich bastards and we've got penguin there saying uh, or you can just stay there in the dirt and die I really don't care and it's got Maxwell Lord in there not sure who uh, this guy is over here but yeah the of course the evil looking bunker is uh, full of all the rich people which we come to find out here in a few pages that they built long before the anti-life equation destroyed the earth they kind of built it and had it ready to go as a uh, as a as a fallback position then here we get um, a grown up Damien has taken on the mantle of the Batman and he's sitting there sewing something uh, together and out of frame Com Commissioner Gordon says I'm not going to lie I never imagined a Batman sewing and then Damien says uh, that my father was so dependent on Alfred was always a little embarrassing Batman should be entirely self sufficient Batman should sew that's right guys Learn some life skills. Like we're gonna we're gonna put the comic book aside for for a minute. Learn some life skills. I mean, like learn how to change your tire, how to fix a toilet, how to unclog a sink, how to sew something together. Um, basic first aid. Learn learn some life skills. Twenty twenty is a crazy ass year. Learn learn how to do it. Learn how to do it in such a way that you don't have to Google it. Yeah, but we're, we'll go with that. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll step off my soapbox here and get back to the comic. Um, then he says, uh, hello, Jim, and uh, G uh, Gordon says, it's good to see you, son, and it's good to have a Batman back. And I love this line from Damien. He says, you're just stoicism in a mustache, aren't you? And then they, they hug it out, which is just amazing to see that these two characters have, you know, they, they know who each other is now, and, you know, Damien's grown up, taken on the mantle, and just there's something entirely hard warming about um seeing the new batman hug commissioner gordon oh it's it's really really great i love it uh dr fate here actually uh, gordon here says your father uh wasn't much of a hugger uh damien says oh believe me i remember that uh but i'm not as emotionally stunted uh we were just lucky scarecrow never realized bruce's greatest fear was intimacy <laughs> uh gordon says batman could have uh, could have chased uh could have been chased out of Gotham with a supportive pat on the shoulder, which I, I kind of love that Damien and Gordon are kind of roasting Batman. It's it's hilarious. Or roasting Bruce, uh, as it were. And then we find out that... Uh, uh, 
Connor, or, I'm sorry, John Kent, uh, the new Superman, has been healed, and um, Crypto is uh, just overjoyed with it. I love him floating up there, tails wagging. He's just licking on John. He's he's back to he's uh you know back to square one. Um, and then we got Mary uh, Marvel over here keeping watch over um, over John as he was asleep and. I kind of feel like there's something between these two. It was this these two um, panels right here that kind of told me like maybe they, there's going to be a little something between these two because we've already got um, Damien and Cassie, uh, the new Wonder Woman. They've got a, a little thing going between them, so it'd be cool to see um, these two uh, characters together. That I think that would be really great. So we go here and we've got go back to the evil rich person layer um, and then the the narration here says billionaires and world leaders uh, who had uh, who had all failed to lead uh, had a bunker long before the threat of an undead apocalypse a place where they where the wealthy could turn their backs on the on the world's problems in comfort and they say welcome to the southern bunker uh, Max Lord says it's all quite civilized we have our soldiers and their families are employed as cooking as cleaning and cooking staff. Zatanna says, you, pre you seem pretty proud of your slaves there. Maxwell Lord and this other guy here who's, I don't I don't know right off, says uh, their service is given in exchange for shelter. They're not slaves. And again, you got Constantine lighting up. He's smoking right here. Again, it's, it, I don't know why I noticed it, but it did. I think it was because I noticed it at the very beginning when they got right out of a battle. He just immediately already has a cigarette in his hand, and, and I thought it was funny. Um, so, uh, Swamp Thing here says, the green is crying out here, uh, it's screaming, and that's one of the reasons they went there to investigate in the first place, and then Jason Blood shows up and pulls Constantine, um, aside to, to give him, uh, to read him in on something that's going on, but first, he's got to turn into Etrigan, and John Constantine is like, God, do we have to deal with the rhyming, <laughs> I love it, he says, before you start, could we please skip the fucking rhyming, like, please, do we have to do that um, I just lost friends and I'm not in the mood for amateur poetry hour and then Etrigan says you are very mean John Constantine which just hilarious whip smart dialogue in this whole thing um, and this is where we start to get an idea of there is something else at play here Etrigan says hell isn't happy souls are um, and uh, Constantine says uh, no it's really not known for that and hell is annoyed that they're not getting a piece of all this Armageddon uh, um, Etrigan says uh, souls are locked inside the anti-living and hell is beyond annoyed Trigon is unhappy he says Trigon is coming to wipe it all away so if it wasn't bad enough that we've got the world run amok with uh, with anti-living uh, the Trigon is angry that the souls aren't leaving the undead because as we know there's a cure and the souls are still there and he's like wait a minute all these people are dead and i didn't get their souls damn it come on i want some souls trigon gonna trigon <laughs> and so yeah that's basically what's going what's gonna happen the, the trigon is gonna is gonna show up and that's what i think we're gonna get into the craziness in uh, in issue four speaking of craziness um Swamp Thing is very unhappy because the, apparently the the rich assholes uh, took the Floronic Man and they are using him as to to grow all of their stuff. And they say here uh, they've imprisoned the Floronic Man and they're torturing him. He is uh, forcing the Green uh, to produce for them, so they basically captured him and they're forcing him to make food for him, like grow all of that fruit that you saw around there. And Swamp Thing is very unhappy about that. He literally pops the head off of Maxwell Lord and says, nope, we are not dealing with this. Um, they say, oh shit. And um, someone, a uh, penguin here says, Professor Ivo, it is time. And when Professor Ivo is there, you know that something else is right behind and there's an Amazo. Of course, there's an Amazo. We don't, because, you know, zombie apocalypse and Trigon isn't enough. Now we've got Amazos to deal with. And so they um, they uh, teleport themselves um, out of there. Um, uh, Constantine says, here, it's time to go. Swamp Thing says, no, they're abusing, That they're green, they're torturing. And he, Constantine says, Swamp Thing will come back with a plan and fuck them up. Uh, but uh, and then, but for now, I promise we got to get out of here. We got to go home. And then we see that they don't just have and Amazo, they have a whole rack of Amazos, so stuff is going to get pretty interesting over the next four issues, uh, 
uh, on the back half of this uh, series, and I, for one, absolutely can't wait for it. So we go back here to the Gotham Garden. It's a day later. Uh, John is suited back up as Superman, and you know what? I gotta say, I really love this new Superman costume. I love like the the, the red shoulders and how it kind of bleeds down the arm and how it kind of fades um, uh, in or bleeds in between um, the shoulders and and the the main uh, emblem on the chest really really cool i love that and actually um constantine here says um earth had been without just a, a justice league for five years it was good to have them back it may have been another man wearing it but there was something important about seeing a superman's symbol again and it became it became very clear very quickly that the son was a lot like the father he spoke implausibilities with certainty and we just believed what he said so oh, i love seeing the, the kind of those kind of more sidekicky characters like john damien and cassie crow up and take those mantles of their parents and mentors it's really really cool so they're talking about um, the cure for the anti-life equation, or the life equation, I guess, as it would be. Um, and they're they're trying to uh, figure out how they're going to to get it. Um, and they say we've searched everywhere; it's not in in Cyborg, but they know that it exists somewhere. Um, and they say Harley Kier says death could have been lying, um, and Cassie says it wouldn't have lied. The lasso of truth uh, compelled it, and that's when Superman down here says we know there's a cure. There's billions of infections relying on us we will find the cure and we will save them uh damien says if there is an anti-life equation cyborg it stands to reason that there must also be a life equation the trick is unlocking it uh bobo here says half of the equation was held by dark side uh the knowledge of the new gods may be what we need here oh we're getting a little new gods action um they say dark side is dead but constantine again smoking <laughs> says yeah uh, uh, look, I think I know what's needed, but it, it means doing something I really don't want to do, uh, bothering someone who would prefer to stay unbothered. And so he uh, borrows, um, he has to, to borrow the Lasso of Truth from the new Wonder Woman. And uh, I, I love it. John here asks, what do you need me to do? Constantine, pointing at him with a cigarette in hand, says, nothing yet, mate, but you're Superman. You'll probably need to save everything in the next bit. Uh, and so they go here and find who they are going to find. And who do they go find but Mr. Miracle Scott Free. They need him to get them to New Genesis to get information from the new gods on how to put together the life equation. And that's why Constantine took the, um, the lasso of truth with him so he could prove to Scott that he is not lying and that there actually is a chance to bring everyone back, including Big Bar who got infected in that one shot and that one shot uh, deceased good a good day to die I believe it was subtitled where we saw a lot of these um, uh, magic based heroes and uh, uh, characters like Constantine and uh, Barda and and Scott free and so yep they're going to new Genesis in the next one and that's where we end this one off another fantastic in this um, this kind of alternate universe um, elseworld ish if, if you want to call it that here in DC comics that I absolutely loved i'm just gonna keep gushing about this until everyone i know has bought and read this series i love it so damn much guys what did you think about deceased dead planet issue three how crazy do you think we're going to get in the rest of this series with trigon new gods amazo bot it's going to be off the chain and i i can't wait for it guys i love this what do you think about it let me know in the comments down below if you like this video and what we're all about here at the channel go ahead and hit that subscribe button uh if you like the channel and enough and want to support the channel down in the description box down below is a link to my patreon page as well as an ask me anything tip page where you can leave a tip along with a question or topic and i'll do a video on that question or topic right here on the channel also got a p.o box email address all my social medias and all that fun stuff down there once again guys thank you so much for watching and until next time we'll see you at the comic shop